everyone, and welcome to another Forgotten Heralds tutorial. This is Holy Ruin, currently on Smite, and today we're going to be talking about Rama, the seventh avatar of Vishnu, Hindu. Alright, so we're going to jump right into the character builder and talk about uh, how to build Rama, two different builds, the crit build and the damage build, and uh, we're going to go over his abilities. So we're going to go into character builder. I've got a custom build set up for this video alone. I'm going to clear it out because normally I just use the uh, crit version, but this will make it a lot easier to talk about. So, once again, I normally play Conquest, so we're going to start talking about that right off the bat. So, normally I build Death Stole right off the bat and Dev Gauntlets, which is pretty normal. Get those stacks, get the extra life steal, which is great in lane, and it's going to keep you alive consistently and deal plenty of damage. Uh, next item, I go Warrior Tabby. Normal. And then I jump down to Executioner, which is right here. There we go. Uh, basic attacks against an enemy god. Uh, reduce your target's physical protection by 8% and additional 6 points for 3 seconds, maxing 3 stacks. Uh, this is a pretty normal build. And then I jump right into the crit items. Rage first, normally for that extra crit chance, the 30% rather than the 20% that Deathbringer brings. And then I jump into Deathbringer. A lot of people build Titan's Bane as their last item. Uh, I like to build Haste and Fatalis most of the time with Rama, uh, but you can do Titan's Bane, Heartseeker, Haste, uh, Haste and Fatalis, really whatever you want, and it's probably going to work out just fine. Late game, it's really all up to you and your play style. I like to chase with Rama, so I get Haste and Fatalis. I know there are a lot of other items that you can get that are better, but that's just what I like to do. Uh, in the defensive area, when I'm doing a 1v1, I normally I'll have a Stone of Gaia if I'm going up against a Mage, uh, Hide of the Demian Lion, uh, if I'm going up against a Physical God or an Assassin or something, My, uh, Magi's Blessing, if I'm going up against someone with a lot of hard CC. Uh, Bulwark of Hope is always great to have uh, against a Mage as well. So we're going to go down to Actives. Uh, Enfeebling Curse, using this item reduces all enemy gods' ground speed by 40% in a 55-foot radius around you for 5 seconds. It also reduces attack speed by 30% for the duration. Cooldown is 60 seconds. This is an amazing item for team fights. You're, you pop it off in the middle of a team fight and you've got an advantage right away. Uh, greater Sprint is a, always a good one to have. Get there quicker, get away quicker. Greater Aegis, also good and Aegis Pendant is also good, and Greater Purification. Uh, consumables are uh, the normal, you know, Healing Potion, Elixir of Power, Physical Might, uh, and Ward, always Ward. So that's the crit version. Now, there's another one that's been floating around ever since Odysseus Bow came out. Uh, so this is how you build that way. Uh, you start with Death's Toll, and instead of getting Devourer's Gauntlet first, you get Odie Bow. So you start building Odibo and finish that out, jump directly into Warrior Tabby, and then get Devourer's Gauntlet for that lifesteal. And then you go into Executioner and Kin Size, and then Titan's Bane. Now, a lot of people are saying that this does a lot more damage, which it very well can. I didn't do the math, but a lot of streamers are saying so, and that's good. Um, I've tried it myself, and it's very effective. Uh, you just have to play it differently. You have to be a little more passive in the beginning. But once you jump in there uh, with second level Odibo, the passive of this item is every basic attack has a 25% chance to uh, trigger Chain Lightning, damaging the target and up to four nearby enemies for 30 damage plus 50% of your total physical power. This cannot trigger more than once every second. Uh, so it's really helpful with lane clear early game, which is wonderful. Um, you're missing out on that lifesteal in the beginning, though. So you've got to be careful early game. Uh, being overly aggressive with the Odie Bow build right in the beginning can lead to disaster. Uh, a lot of people have trouble jumping in there and playing with the Odie Bow build. But it's a great build, and I use it every now and then. I mostly use the crit build uh, because I'm more used to that. But the Odie Bow build is very good. All right. And so those are the two normal builds that people are doing right now. Uh, and we're going to jump into his abilities. So... His passive is Astral Quiver, and it affects himself. Rama's Astral Quiver generates an Astral Arrow every 15 seconds. Also, every basic attack that Rama lands will reduce the amount of time to generate an arrow 
by two seconds. Astral arrows are used with his other abilities. It's a great passive. So, aerial strike. Oh, sorry. Astral strike. Forgive me. Uh, Rama switches to a more powerful arrow that pierces and slows enemies. This ability consumes one of Rama's astral arrows and deals bonus damage with every shot. Rama cannot toggle this ability if he has no astral arrows. The slow can be stacked up to three times. So, what's really good about this is that uh, it's constantly regenerating, so you're going to keep getting more and more arrows throughout the time, and it's great for lane clear. This is what you're going to use mainly for lane clear. You're also going to use your two with it sometimes, um, but you can actually shoot through uh, the minion wave to attack another enemy god uh, while also attacking the minions, uh, which is great. Next is Pick Me Up. Passive. Anytime an enemy is hit by an astral arrow, there's a percent chance that an astral arrow pickup will appear on the ground. Only procs on the first enemy hit by astral strike. The pickup adds one arrow to Rama's astral arrow count. Active. Rama gains increased attack speed. So with Pick Me Up, uh, you're going to see an arrow drop on the ground while you're attacking with astral strike. And you pick that up, and then you can replenish your Astral Quiver and keep playing. Pretty simple. Uh, it increases, it's, his, it's his steroid, so it increases his attack speed uh, by quite a bit. Does a really good job. Now his third ability is Rolling Assault. Ramba performs a roll in the direction he is currently traveling. After performing a dodge roll, for five seconds, Ramba's next basic attack will consume an Astral Arrow that cripples the target and deals bonus damage. Rama incurs no movement penalty during this shot. So, this is a great getaway or a close-in. Um, you can roll out of ultimates, all kinds of stuff with this ability. And it's a, it's a great one to keep leveled up. And his ultimate is Astral Barrage. It's an AoE ability, and it has a radius of 30, 20, and 15. So, Rama launches into the air and shoots three powerful arrows at the ground, each successive shot increasing in damage 50%, 75%, 100%, and decreasing the AoE size from 30 at the start to 15 as the last. Uh, this is a really clutch ultimate. You can do this when they're trying to get away, enemy gods are trying to get away, when uh, people are really close to getting the fire giant down, really close to getting the gold fury down. You're able to ultimate and you're able to hit that, and you can steal it pretty good. A lot of people are putting up wards behind these areas, specifically for Ramas, when that happens. Uh, so, those are his abilities. Uh, I normally level up Astral Strike first. I grab Astral Strike so I can start building that uh, Astral Quiver while I'm waiting for minions to spawn. And then I get uh, Pick Me Up second and Rolling Assault third, depending on the situation. If I think that the enemy is going to push extremely hard in lane, then I'll get Rolling Assault second so I can get out of there if need be. But that is all I have for you guys on Rama. Um, I'll be posting some videos on gameplay on Rama and a few other gods within the next couple weeks. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Just post it in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again.